Good morning everyone, it's Rachel here and we are doing Roxy's Weekly Challenge. Now, today I won't have my timer because uh, there's a few steps in today's project and so um, I've just sort of been figuring it out. And so, um, yeah, there's a few steps so I won't have a timer because I'll be pausing my video um, and then coming back to you guys in the various steps. So we're going to need some leftover book pages, uh, the ones we've been gluing on if you've kept them. Otherwise, just take a piece, a page out of your glue book. This one's a bit rough, but anyway, we'll use it. Maybe I'll glue on that one um, and I'll get, do I have any others? Here, I thought I was very organized. Okay, I've got a couple here. We'll just do a few. Um, and then uh, you're going to need, I pulled out all of my scraps of more sort of plain papers. So these are all little scraps and they're fairly plain. And so I will, I'll just do one and then I'll do another one off camera. I'm gonna do a, um, probably not that one, it's a bit white. Um, I'm gonna do a collage on here to cover this and um, I could just leave the edge. So I'm gonna start off with my bigger pieces if at all possible. And uh, we're gonna do just collage, just a, a beigey ecru neutral ish kind of collage and i'll tell you what else you're going to need you're going to need um some lovely um botanical sort of uh, stamps and some ink i'm going to use brown um what's it called versifying clear so we did we did do the other ones oh they're up there somewhere you know the other ones we did on the book pages actually i think i can see one and we did the book page collage and oh no, I can't see one. I have the, I have a couple left. I don't know where I've put them. I do know where I've put them, but I can't seem to get, grab one. Just a sec. No, that's not one. Anyway, um, we did them in a few quite early on in the challenge um, when I came back from Australia, and so now we're going to do um, something slightly different. We're using the planer book pages. I might put that one that way. Um, to to cover our glue book page and we are going to stamp on them but we're going to do something else before we stamp on them so you're going to need i'm going to sneeze oh excuse me <coughs> seems oh excuse me excuse, excuse me excuse me it seems to be a friday thing the the sneezies um oh gosh i haven't sneezed at all today and wouldn't you know turn on the camera and along comes a sneeze it's just popped in to say hello okay so what was I saying? We're going to need some acrylic paint, um, just a couple of colours, maybe. Just you know, start off with a couple of colours. Don't need more than that. And we are going to um, be swooshing. So I'm I'm choosing um, fairly plain coloured. I might put this one. Sort of go by colour here. I'm going to do some fairly um, not plain, light colours, not strong colours, um, for my my swooshing so some pale colored acrylic paint is what you need and you might so I have um, I use uh, Stamperia paints and um, you might need a script uh, like not a script like you know little word or numbers um, stamp as well we'll just see how we go um, just telling you the things you might want to gather if you want to pause the video and do your collage if you're confident doing your collage you could pause the video do a couple of collage pages and um, come back with them ready to go um, but anyway it's not like it's a rush because it is a video that you can stop and start uh, yeah so um, what was I saying oh dear I lost my train of thought just I'll just sit here and have a think about it for a minute um, oh I think I was saying, did I say, um, I use Stamperia. I love the little, just the craft um, for this sort of job. <laughs> it's heavy. The craft um, paints, the little Stamperia ones. Um, I think you can get folk art in the States. I don't know what you get in Australia. Um, and, and the UK. Let's not forget the UK. Um, and so... Um, if your paint, because acrylic paints have sort of like, I sometimes feel like, you know, the ones from the tube especially, um, do have a bit of a, they can dry a bit um, and they feel a bit plasticky. And so what you can do, and I do it 
um, if you want to lighten a colour, just so you had like, don't go out and buy light paints for this job. I mean, honestly, just um, if you if you don't have light enough colours, you can use something to lighten them like a wipe. And if they're like a more plasticky feeling when they dry type of um, acrylic paint, what I do is I put in, well, I use it anyway, even in my Stamparia ones, which are a bit chalky as a paint. Um, I just put in some white gesso as my color, my thing to, to lighten up my colors. So there's one already done. I'll do another one. And yeah, so just use some, some white gesso, just gesso, and that will lighten your color and make it a bit chalky to get that sort of texture rather than having the plasticky sort of feel. And I, as I said, I especially find that with the um, tube acrylics but not so much my crafty, maybe bodgy, I don't know, um, <laughs> Stamperia acrylics. Now, I think I might just glue this here, on here, as I'm going to be covering the whole thing. It's a bit of fun, something different. Got to switch it up sometimes. We're just going to be making um, tags or journal cards. Oh, no, actually, I'm, I'm telling a lie. You could be making pockets they could be pockets there's no reason why they can't be pockets um but i'm going to be doing t um well if i don't back them with something plain they could be a um, pocket i'm going to put that one there i'll just put this one aside for gluing on so we'll get this one done and then I'll pause the video. Well, no, actually, I don't need to pause the video. I need to cut them up. We'll do that first before I pause the video. Even though they're wet, it's not always ideal. It's always probably a better idea to wait until they dry um, before cutting. I'm going to put that one there. So just mixing up my beiges. Accru, beige, light yellow, golden. Well, that's a bit golden, isn't it? But you can see how many tiny, like little scraps I have here that really do need to be used up. I don't want too many. I don't want these weird edges in my collage. So I do tear those off. Which means you do lose a bit of the pattern. But I think I'll put that one there. But I need to put something across here first. I am. I know we're going to be using paint. But I am using digitals. Here's a nice piece of old. Oh, that's the same colour as that one. I wouldn't put two, two of the Oh, I've got the hiccups now. I drank my my green um, drink that I make for all of us. Lily didn't want it today. She took a herb. I think she, I don't know if she took regular tea or a herbal tea to school today. So that would be okay, that piece there. It's plain enough. It's not plain, plain, but it's plain enough. Um... Yeah, I've had my green drink, so which is so basically what I do in the morning is I got the I got the big Nutri bullet that has all the different attachments. It's really amazing. I mean, some of you might have a Vitamix or just a regular blender, but I like the Nutri bullet because you it's got the um, different attachments and there's the cut that comes with the cups and you can do the takeaway sort of thing, like make it and go. And anyway, but I make it for three people, so I needed to get the big ones so that I could make a large enough quantity instead of having to do the little ones are sort of like a mono serve. Anyway, so I put in, I free, I cut up pineapple and I freeze it, and um, I put in um, so th uh, for well a cup of water for each person. So however many of us is having it, um, and then I put. Uh, frozen, uh, just one like piece like that of frozen pineapple. Because I've got something on me. Um, frozen pineapple, half a banana. Um, for two people today, I put half an apple, which I washed and and just put in with the skin as well, because that's where that's where they say all the nutrients are. Um, I put in a handful of spinach, uh, half a thing of celery, because you know they're really tall, only half, because otherwise it's too strong for me. I put in a um, half a scoop of vanilla protein and I put in a little handful of almonds. Let me think what else. Oh, a couple of things of mint 
Am I forgetting something? Sometimes I grate a bit of ginger in it. Um, and occasionally I add a little bit of lemon. If I have too much, I drink too much lemon for some reason, I sort of get like colic. So I don't um, always add lemon. Um, what else? So pineapple, banana, spinach, little bit of celery, apple. Oh, I put in um, about two thirds of a kiwi, sometimes a whole kiwi um, as well. And um, I added almonds in today. And so then I, with the, with the um, what's it called? The, let's cut these while I'm gas bagging. Um, with the um, Nutribullet, you can extract. So I do that first. So that, cause that really, um, you know, makes sure there's no lumps. Now I might do these ones. I'm gonna divide these ones into three and the other one I'm gonna divide into four. Um, and then I, um, so I do the extract part and it, and it does it. You just press it, the button extract and then it does it. And then, um, and then I blend it if, you know, maybe it's not, um, you know, it hasn't all sort of broken down properly. I want to do this one. I think I needed to do it about four, no, four and a bit. This particular page, just not, if you want to divide it into four, you need to know how big your page is. Um, and so yes, yeah, so I blended that. I had that just before, and that's kind of like my breakfast. And you know, all of those ingredients are then divided in half because there's two of us. I you know, should do it in half. So then we've got to back these, and I've just got this. I love this paper for backing things. So it's just packing Amazon paper. And so what I'm going to do is measure it about there and I can get two out of that and so yes I might it might make me have the hiccups for a second because I just had it I think that was what my point was let's get to the point Rachel I need to tear up another piece more or less this is my measuring this is the extent of it and bodgy tearing but you know that's what we want. We don't want it to be neat and tidy. Well, I don't. You might. I might. I just don't. I like the messiness of it all. Yeah, that's that. Love this recycled paper. Sometimes I don't keep it because I might have too much of it. I'm sure I've got. I've even ironed it before. I've been known to iron it because it's all you know crumpled in the package. So this is the first step where we do our collage with our scraps and I've still got a mountain of scraps there I'll have to do more um, use your recycled excuse me paper just stick down where I want you to go would you honestly the struggle is real isn't it um, so yep and then back them like so basically I could have backed these see that I'll keep that piece I, I could have backed these as a full sheet you can also do that if you really want to go really fast and streamline your process, you can back it as a full sheet. But the reason why I'm not backing it as a full sheet is because I like to have the torn look on there. And I'm, I like, because I'm using, it's a vintage paper. It's not like super old or anything, but it is vintage. It has a nice patina to it. So um, I like to see the edge. I just think it creates interest. So that's why I'm doing them individually and not going super fast. So um, I'll back these. And then we've got to back the tall ones and I might choose a different paper. I might use straw paper. Straw paper is a good backer. Or you can use plain book page. You know, leftover from your books that you've been ripping up. You've got the, um, the first pages are plain and you, I keep those because they're good for backing things. There are uh, people who say, oh, well, it's not archival, but I just rec I just think if you write on there with biro, it's probably not going anywhere for a long time. Okay, that's that one, and we'll do this one, and then we'll choose something different. So we're not always looking at the same thing. But you see, I'm ending up with some lovely little scraps here to use as well. Did I ask anyone how they are today? I probably didn't. Just got cracking, got right into it. Okay, so that piece will go over there. I'm sticking to everything, chuck that in the bin. And 
then we'll be ready for our swooshing. Actually, I don't even need to stop my video. I need to stop my video after when the swooshing needs to dry is that's when I need to stop. Okay, so those are done. I've got four there. So I would, um, you know, make do all my collages, do my backings if I haven't backed them before I, I cut them. And then, um, and then do the painting, which I'm calling the swooshing, because that will be the action that's going to happen. I'm just going to, going to fold that crookedly, of course. It's very Aussie to say gonna. <laughs> I don't think my dad would be very impressed listening to me. I'm going to. Okay. So. Oh my gosh, my sister must be exploding with excitement. She's heading off to New York with the, the school um, on the 8th. So um, that's very soon, isn't it? I don't know how much free time she's going to have. Um Actually, I could leave that. I'm going to leave that overhanging the other way because she, the, the boys are going for their, their their pipes and drum. So the bagpipes and the drums, it's really amazing. I don't know if they're doing like um, public sort of um, exhibitions, but if anyone's in New York and they are doing things that you can go and see, it's really amazing to watch. I've seen, I mean, I would love to, I would have loved to have gone, but I just couldn't. Um, and I would have been there by myself, really, because she's working, looking after the boys and stuff, even though my nephew's going as well. Um, but really amazing to listen to and watch. They've got incredible skill, those boys. It's a very serious thing at their school. Okay. So that's going to go like that a bit funny doesn't it with the probably didn't think about that very carefully did I with the straw paper but it doesn't matter it is what it is we're going to be doing other stuff in a minute so it the the as you know its look will change is what I'm trying to say I'm really having a hard time today okay so I've only got a little glass of water here too so that sort of limits me a little bit with colours, I think, colour changing too much, unless I pause the video and, and go and change my colour. Okay, so they're done. So let's just, I'll just shove the scraps over there. I don't want to lose my pieces. I've got seven tags here. I may have to jump up and get something. Like I might have to get up and get another. I wanted to see. I've got my bodgy. This is it. This is my little, it's messy my little underpaint thing. I'll put it over on that side. Just so I don't get paint everywhere. And I can swoosh my brush around on there, you see, and, and clean it. Okay, so then I've got, where is it? Here it is. I have my um, throwaway palette. I've got a piece of paper towel and I've got my brush over here. I've got a, like a flat brush, my swoosher brush, I call it. It's my swisher brush and then I've got one of my tags doesn't matter which way is the up that's a printable as long as I don't put too much water in my I can put a bit of water in nothing happens um, water in my um, paint I keep my paint stored upside down too otherwise they don't come out when they're getting low um, as long as I don't put too much water in then um, nothing will happen to that now I could go I don't think I want to go beige on beige, but I could do this colour as well. My sample ones I did, you, oh, you can't see, but um, my sample colours I did a when I gave it a go just to see how I liked the idea. Um, excuse me, I'll move this over here so you can see. I did those two colours, and I'll show you those afterwards. I'll put this over here. I need to put a bit of 
it won't squish otherwise it's too thick mix a bit of water in there and I'm just going to put it over my background but I, the reason why I watered it down is I don't I don't want to cover my background completely I just want to be have a hint of the color And as I said, these are very chalky, so I don't really need to be too concerned about them feeling plastic. So that's done. So what I'll do is I get my brush swished off there and then I can clean it in the water. And I've got less paint on there. It's okay if there's a bit of blue that goes into the pink, that will be fine. And we'll take one of the big ones. Ideally, I think it would be a good idea just to let it all sort of really dry really well and of course on the different papers the paint will absorb in differently okay it's a pretty quick process let's get this one and we'll do I need a bit more I'm getting low I'm fairly limited in my colors I probably need to go around the corner and get a few more colors you could also use chalk paint I've got chalk paint here let's just put maybe I'll put, use a bit of chalk paint Now I might make sure, I'm sort of not going, wasn't going right to the edge, but I will on this one just because I had the, um, the straw paper sort of all looking the same. Okay, so that's that one. And now, it's not much paint on there really. Put that in there and let me just, I've never used these. Oh my gosh, that is a beautiful color. It's probably going to be quite dark. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I can't even open it because I've never opened it before. It's probably dry. Oh no, it's not. It's shaking. Um, it's just from the hardware store. It's called Chalky Look Fleur. I can't open that one. Let's see if I can open this one. This one. Oh yeah, that's shaking. That's a Tommy. That's a that's an Italian brand. It's kind of a bit like the... I can't open it. No. Okay, we're not using the chalk paints, guys. Can't open them. Oh, that's a nice colour. I would like to open it. So if you're using chalk paint, then that's... Oh, okay, I'm going to pause you and I'm going to go and get a knife and open it. I started talking and, and I hadn't even put you back on. Okay, I haven't used chalk paint before. Can you believe that? My brush is not perfectly cleaned because I am using this silly little thing. But I want to see... I might need... I'll take a bit off there and put it over here so I can add some water to it. A lovely color I might use it more on this one I may oh that's a beautiful color it's inter be interesting to see how they dry too because they dry a bit different to what you see when they wet oh, I love that color okay and I'll do one more well I'm going to do two more I don't need any more water Nice thing to swoosh on to journal pages as well. Now, I could use a different colour, couldn't I? I brought the knife in, in case I want to, um, in case I want to try a different colour. I think I will. That's the first time I've used those. I think I might, oh, when I try this really bright colour, give it a shake. I got, Brooks, you just stick the knife under there. And when you get it, go to get it in there. So helped. Yeah. Yes, 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 it allows. Oh, I have opened that one before. Definitely need to pull out my bigger jar. Anyway, I'm just going to grab a bit of this. Okay, so now we've done our base and I'm going to pause the video so that I can 
move on to the next pick. I need to wait for them to dry just a little bit and then um, and then I don't throw these pieces of paper out because they build up and then eventually I might use them in collage and they eventually become quite nice to use. So I'm going to tidy up and let those dry and then we'll come back and do the next part for our tags. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I am back and they're damp but kind of dry enough to to work with. So um, <clears throat> let's take this bigger one here. I'm going to do one of these bigger flowers on there. So I should get my a wet one because I inevitably be dirty myself. I dirtied my mat. Okay, um, where's my Versafine ink? I think it's probably under here. So I'm just using pine cone. I had that on my table. I find it easier to ink it upside down rather than pressing my stamp into the thing. I might um, stamp some sort of word. I might put that down there. So it's up to you what colour you want to use. And I might stamp... Maybe I'll stamp this. That one. Not there. Just for a bit of fun. Oh, upside down. <laughs> I've got no words. No words for my upside down stamp. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> I even looked at it thinking I was seeing it up the right way. Oh, well. I could cover that with a label <laughs> if I wanted to. I'm not too concerned about it. I'm going to snip my corners off and I'm going to make that into a tag. Oh dear. What a goose. And I'm thinking now, do I want to put a... I think I might put a hole. I'm just trying to think what kind of hole do I want to put at the top? Did I want to put the European one or a holy hole? I think I'll do one of these um, and put some sort of sari silk in there, I think. That's my thought. So that's that one. Oh dear. Oh well. You learn what not to do. Don't stamp upside down. Test your stamp before you do it. Okay, we've got this one and I'm going to use a different flower because these ones can have nice long flowers, big flowers. Obviously, if you've got smaller things, you just might stamp, you know, a bigger amount of wording below it or above it. I'm going to put this one up. And see, nothing happened to the printable there with the paint. It's not like I did watercolour on it. I did put a bit of water into the paint, but um, it wasn't a watercolour, so snip that off. I'm not even going to measure it. I don't care. And... I could do that. I might do a decorative corner punch as well on one. And this one I'm going to stamp. I can't find. I had that. Oh, here it is. This is what I was looking for. Oh, my goodness. I've, I've been searching for like 10 minutes. And that was, it was in there. I just couldn't see it. That one is what I wanted. And then I'm going to punch. I could do the punching of the hole afterwards, but I seem to be wanting to do it now. There. and then we have this one so this could be like a journal card you see what I mean like it could become a pocket uh, I'm thinking I could do something horizontal there use this I love this stamp so these stamps that you're looking at the on <laughs> I thought that was the ink um these stamps that you're looking at the orange ones are from makey stamps they are my all-time favorite stamps and what I use the most when stamping, although I don't stamp that much, but should were I to stamp a lot, that's what I would be using, especially. And then I have like a few random stamps that I've, like those sorts of things are from AliExpress, those ones that I've collected over quite a long period of time, because I wanted some postal stamps and I wanted to buy the Tim Holtz one, and it's just not available here. Um, isn't that beautiful? I love that. It's just gonna be simply snipped there, there, 
Um, I don't know what else you could do. I don't know if it's a bit damp. You could take like that one. Oh, just a little piece of something. Might not stick so well, but we'll try. Um, and then the other stamps, a lot of my little animal stamps I bought like sort of here, like when I've gone to a craft fair or something, but I don't go to those anymore. But when I have in the past, uh, I'm going to put that there and fold it around. Love that. Oh, they're so much fun. They're just something different. You could put a little bit of washi, um, not what, yes, washi or, or Florentine paper or something. Um, this one I'm going to do vertically just and I, I might just do it like a little sort of journal card sort of thing situation going on so sometimes I can't tell you where a stamp came from because I might have bought it just years ago like from a French website called um, oh I can't even say what it's called um, I'm just looking here oh I love this one that might be too big but I love that bunny I love it. And then I reach. Oh, this is like one of my favourites. These are all makey stamps. Um, love for me or something like that. But anyway, there's no point in telling you because they don't have those stamps anymore. Because I've looked. Because I've been asked before. And they just simply don't have them anymore. So, I mean, unless I were to buy one now, there'd be no point in me telling you where I got it from. So I think I'll just use this one because I feel like it's the most appropriate. There. And I don't stamp straight. It's not. It's My care factor for that is zero. Um, now, let's see. What was I looking for? I thought I might have over here in my mess. It's only a little mess. Oh, I do. I thought I might have some of these. You never know. I might like to use a couple of these as my tab at the top. So you see why I couldn't time it today because there were too many steps and stopping and starting, waiting for things to dry. But if you only um, swoosh a thin amount of paint on there, it dries pretty quickly. I probably should close my ink sitting there while I do this because Actually, this is what I mean, like you, I should be stamping, doing all my stamping and then flapping about um, embellishing afterwards. I don't know why I'm doing it this way. This is what I'm feeling like. So you do really just have to go with the flow. Like if you feel like doing like a big production, production line, I should say, um, do that. If you don't feel like it and you're stopping and starting because you want to finish things off as you go, do that. Depends how you feel. It's your crafting session. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be what you're, you know, that you do you and you do what you feel like. Of course, you can take these a step further. I like the simplicity. I'm enjoying the simplicity of them. Um, that one's a bit bright. I am liking that one. I'm feeling like, oh dear, I'm sorry. <laughs> I might like this one, but I might not. Um, let's see once I finish this one off we're more than half we've only got three more they are really fun um, anyway you could do some mark ma that's what I think I was talking about that I didn't finish you could do some mark making like you could pull out your um, intense pencils and and do some little dashes or gel pens or what uh, you see I like that one because it's paler that's why um, and I feel you know it goes with the soft colors of the tag so I'm going to put that one on the front so I just put some glue on and I'd have the little festoony thing in the downward direction I think I have the pointy bits up and then on this side what will I have? This one or that one? That one. There you go. You 
you got to love a lot and not what to do. <laughs> oh, dear. Good things come out of that too, you know. And then I'll later I'll just come with my little scissors and just tidy that up a little bit because it's not even. Okay, next, let's just put that aside. I'm not going to faff, faff about anymore. So I went off the botanical and I've gone into the, the fauna. But I need here something tall, long. Um, no, I don't think the rabbit... You want, you want to choose stamps that are going to sort of fill the space a bit better. So I'm going to choose. I've got two little ones to do after this, I believe. Sorry about the tapping noise. Can't be helped. Turn the volume down if you don't like it. Okay, let's see if I can... I'm going to put the word underneath it. I could get a block out and press it down properly, couldn't I? There we go. Um, I, might, I think I might like vintage. I think I should test it. Upside down, I was holding it. Now, this one, these ones sometimes are coming away. See, it's got all that ink there. I'm just going to put some of it on my finger and some on the thing. Okay. Vintage. That's the correct way. I know how to stamp that there. That way I didn't get all the lines around it. And my cleaning off is just stamping it on the thing. And then here, oh, I wasn't going to be messing with that, was I? They're all going to be tags. And I will punch a hole afterwards. Oh, I'm going to punch a hole now, considering I've done all my other ones. Okay. And we have this one here. What about a squirrel? Oh, no, wait, just a minute. What? Oh, this one will be beautiful. This is gorgeous. I bought this one not too long ago from Makey Stamps because I bought them for my mum just before Christmas, I think I bought it. And I bought it for mum. She chose it. And um, so she could put it on her little thank you cards when she does things. And um, and I loved it. So I bought one. One for, one for mum and one for me. She did get a couple of others. See, I dirtied it there, but it doesn't matter. And we'll put the little Paris stamp under there. I think it'll be nice. This is a Cavallini stamp. And there's a shop here in town... I think it was in the set. There was a set. And the shop pulled them apart and they were selling them individually. So I bought I bought it because I liked it. Now I think I'll have a piece of this. I'll just cut a little piece off. I don't really like the gentleman, so I probably won't use him. These were just washi strips um, from the Graphics Fairy. And I printed them on just the clear, um, the clear label plasticky stuff. And then we've got this one. And then we're done. So let's choose something. Mm. Might have to do the stag again. Do that one. It's a bit small. Now I like it to be filled properly um, or the squirrel we could do the squirrel no I think I'll do the stag or that one let's do that one I love that one let's do that I haven't used that I have other stamps but these are my favorites my go-to's do like that so we can close that now and I do want it with just a little bit of something like what I put on the other one so that way I've used that up really I'm not going to use the face okay put that there Even though that's pink, I like red and pink together. 
So yeah, if you've got little stamps, a good way to fill it in is with a little bit of words. I'm actually going to, I want to put string in this one. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, so let's just, I'm going to put string in a few. they're kind of rustic and I like the jute string because it's kind of rustic as well same similar feeling to the to the tag yes look at that I mean wouldn't that be just a lovely little gift tag not didn't take you know you can really streamline it and do each process make a whole lot and then move on to the next process and really you wouldn't take long to make a whole lot of a whole pile of them you could do them for Christmas with swooshing of green and red and um, and having them as gift, you know, Christmas gift tags. So that other one with the stag, it, that doesn't need anything. That's that. And then this one doesn't need anything. This one, I think I'm going to have some sari. I'm just going to grab it. This spotty sari. Um, I bought it from. Who did I buy it from? Did I buy it from Oliver Twist in in Canada? And then I'm going to put. A, it's very wide. I don't want it that wide. I'm going to use, cut it into three. Let's put a snip and rip it. One, two, three. Okay. So that piece can go in here, and I just um do one tie it seems to stay oops fumble fingers there we go oh didn't yeah just like that just keep it I, I reason why I don't want I I um I um <laughs> I cut it is I don't want it too thick is also because then it's so bulky in the in the book in the journal there we go you could snip them at an angle if you like I love that spot with this one now that's upside down is that a problem do you think I mean I could stick a, a labely thing over it but I think I'll just leave it someone can have my boo boo and then these are the sample ones I did in the blues just so you can see the different colors and here I didn't punch any holes and I didn't stamp any words because I used the big stamps on the little ones. So just to give you an idea. And I added a little bit to a couple, uh, two, three of them. So that's the blue. And here I swooshed a bit of blue and then also a bit of green. I think I did there as well. So if you use your brush, it's a little bit dirty. You can get the two-tone sort of colors. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It's just something a bit different. You'll need your so let's just recap. You'll need some book pages. Um, you might need one if you've got straw paper, you can pull that out. Um, you need book plain oh, plain book pages as your base, your glue pages. Um, plain scraps so they can also be digitals, plain digital scraps because we're just going to do the collage um, page and then cut it up and then um, back it with whatever straw paper or packaging paper, paper, craft paper, whatever you like. Um, and then you need your stamp, your paint, and an old chalk paint or acrylic paint, and just maybe add a little bit of gesso to get that chalky. I mean, if you could feel this, it's all very chalky, that chalky feel. Um, if you've got Stamperia paints, acrylic paints in those little ch tubby things, then you're set. Um, and then you need your stamps. You might need a word stamp and a botanical or animal, or whatever stamp you like, really. And then you can make these fun little tags, just something different to add to a journal or put in a gift. So that is my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next week. Bye.